everyone good evening big good evening to each and everyone who has been watching this series image based learning okay so this is uh, anatomy so in this obviously we know we have lot of images and through images only we understand the subject right so image based learning anatomy is what we are going to do today's series is number 4 and myself dr roini wyan and i would like to welcome you all for this session so here not wasting much time i would be just highlighting the referral code so ref what is referral code many of them have asked me what is referral code when do we get to use this referral code is something that you need to use wherever it is prompted so you can access all this free products like the special classes the quizzes and the test everything you can access using the referral code and you can also go for subscriptions at a discounted price like you get 10% discount when you use the referral code it's also called the unlock code so you get 10% discount when you use the name my name itself is the referral code so you can see this that is the you know um important thing to note you will not forget it easy to remember and this is the referral code r o h i n i there is one more referral code and you can use that also but this one is much easier to remember so you have r o h i n i and when you use this you get 10% discount on the classes like the plus classes or you can go with the iconic classes you get the 10% discount and even when you go for that emi option you can opt for this referral code or unlock code and then you can get little more discount on the here my option as well all right let's see if there is anything that uh, students want to you know update all right so here we have first question what is this first question first question is always you know the tough question because many people are not uh, used to this type of uh, interaction so they will be like what is this so now this is image based remember this is image based so you are going to answer the question based on this particular image so what is that you see here so what procedure do you think is happening here so procedure that is happening is cervical block right cervical plexus block so which nerves are chosen which roots are chosen for the block so you can see there is c2 to c4 deep cervical plexus so you can see superficial plexus you know block itself is sufficient for so many procedures let's list all those procedures that you can do with this block and what are the things that you need to be careful about when you do this block it's a very important thing to know and keep in mind you can also see that the landmark for this is sternocleidomastoid and the cricoid cartilage so cricoid cartilage you should be know at what level it is and where uh, the um you know the roots there is c2 c3 c4 c4 c5 ends you should know that and there is transverse process of all these things you should be able to identify in the landmark all right so you should also be identifying the caudal portion of the mastoid process because that is the insertion of the sternocleidomastoid muscle so sternocleidomastoid muscle is one of the important key muscle in the neck because many things you can uh, you know use this as a landmark for all right the first one <clears throat> what are the things that you should keep in mind that you can use this superficial plexus block in the neck just think what are the bones that are present so there could be the fractures right fractures of the um cervical vertebrae for that to correct or repair those fractures you need 
and there could be the fracture of the clavicle for that you need to have this block or it could be the insertion of internal jugular vein uh, central venous catheterization okay so that is one thing you need to keep in mind and then also if there is any lacerations to repair those laceration or stitch those lacerations you need this and you also need this to drain any abscess near the earlobe that could be near the earlobe or it could be the glands around it which are the glands that we have we have parotid or uh, submandibular right and you should just remember this is C2 to C4 nerves. All right. Okay. One more thing to remember is what are the things that you need to keep in mind and what kind of patients you should be, you know, aware of. You, the, if you take the history, you should be checking whether the patient has any COPD or there could be chances of pneumothorax also. You should look out for those things and there could also be chances of damage to which nerve? Phrenic nerve because phrenic nerve arises from the cervical plexus. So phrenic nerve contralateral paralysis. You have to be aware of this. Contralateral paralysis of the phrenic nerve in case of cervical plexus block can happen. So that is one thing to remember. All right. So these are the things that you need to keep in mind with the cervical plexus block. Okay, let's move on to the second one. What is this one? What do you see here? You see scaphoid bone. You can see the anatomy and fracture of the scaphoid bone. And you please remember, scaphoid bone is one of the, you know, uh, bones that can easily get fractured. So because this lies in the... <clears throat> Anatomical snuff box and the tenderness felt in the anatomical snuff box indicates that there is a fracture of the scaphoid bone. Other than that, what else lies in the anatomical snuff box? So you can see that this is very common fracture in case of those who are uh, boxers. So these are somebody um, like boxing or those who are um, uh, fallen on the you know, outstretched hand, that is foosh fractures. This can happen. The scaphoid bone can get fractured. And the blood supply of the scaphoid bone is very important because it has retrograde blood supply. So there are high chances that, you know, it can have the necrosis of the distal pole. So you should remember necrosis is very common. Okay. So... <clears throat> So this is proximal and distal. So you can see distal ridge vessels and scaphoid tubercle. What is the blood supply? 20% and the other one is 80%. So you can see the proximal pole. You can see there is, a, it is just like a peanut. It looks like a peanut, okay? And there is distal pole. So you can identify the proximal and distal pole very easily. And this is on the thumb side. And this is very closely associated with the anatomical snuff box. All right. So remember the retrograde blood supply. Okay, next one. Identify, you know, if there is a pain radiating from the back side of your luteals, through the thigh, through the leg and to the sole of the foot. Towards the sole of the foot, the leg, back side, you can also see the thigh region and the gluteals. What does that indicate? What does that indicate? Which nerve could be injured here? 
there is the static nerve injury. You can see the static nerve is, you know, uh, very easily injured in case of penetrating wound or it could be the fracture of the pelvis itself. Sudden fall on your uh, bottom can also result in fracture of the pelvis. And also dislocations of the hip joint can also fracture this. So most frequently injured nerve during the IM injections is also the sciatic nerve. The, since the sciatic supplies all the muscles at the back of the thigh and the lower limb, it is a very important nerve. You know, easily you can see all those changes in the patient. So you can see that pain radiating from the back to the up to the sole of the foot, you can identify. All right. Next one. So here I have some uh, you know, pictures of those who have dedicated various things like the, you know, um, the hats are earned by these viewers who have put in so many minutes, like we have 1000 minutes, we have 10K minutes, 100 minutes. All these students have put in so many minutes of their watch time. So once you do that, you get these hats. You get red hat, brown, blue, etc. So all these hats are the dedications to their educators. So one can have so many minutes of their watch time credited to their account and then they can dedicate it to their favorite educators or from whom they have learned so much. And there is a note also, please visit my profile to see all this they have to say. They have said a lot of things. There are many nice, nice things to read. And it feels good when we read it because it gives us the motivation and it will motivate you and stay, make you focused when you, you know, have these hat earned. And the number of followers also goes on increasing day by day. That is really nice credit to any educator. You can also see here some red hat, yellow hat, etc. And these are the credentials. And you can also see my profile there. My name is Rohini Wine. And you can see that I'm a neat PG educator for anatomy. And here we have uh, the special class features. What is special class feature? Now, there is always difference in the YouTube classes and the special classes. The special class gives you the feel of the classroom itself. Not like the online classes where you have a very limited interaction. So it feels like an offline class because there are so many features like raise the hand. You can ask the question. You can talk to the educator. All these features will make the special class just feel like a real one. Okay. So now here we have very interactive light classes and it is very structured. It is for the you know, groups that are really the ones who have subscribed for these classes and you don't feel like a fish in the you know big ocean where you are searching what to exactly learn from this class. So join the special classes of mine. It is every day at 5 p.m. So every day at 5 p.m. I'll be discussing various um, things. I will tell you what are the various topics I would be discussing in the coming days. There is also poll feature where we can, you know, use the poll and we can do the MCQs. We can do the case scenarios. You can, you know, pick the answer from the options that are listed. And there is also this raise a hand feature where you can ask the questions to the educator and you'll never miss a class because you will always get a notification in prior to the class. And there is also lecture notes that are downloaded after the class. So you would not miss any topic at all. So you can also watch this anytime and anywhere because there is nothing that, you know, um, that stops you from uh, down keeping these special classes handy because the Unacademy app has got all these things features and you can access it, watch our classes live or recorded anytime from any of your devices, be it the mobile phone or your PC. So now here are some of the recorded or upcoming special classes. I have every day at 5 p.m. a special class where I'm going to take topics on the head and neck the next two days because this is what we have been doing all this month. And next two days, I'll be um, taking the head and neck topics where I'm going to 
um, address about the mandible age changes and fractures and ossifications, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is going to be little on the you know um, PG side. So you are going to have a good exposure to the bone. So that is one thing, and we are also going to see some of the other nerves that are associated with it. So for example, the inferior alveolar nerve and the vessels and the block, all that we are going to check out. And that is one important topic that um, I have listed. And there is also neck region that has been just done. Neck region topic we have uh, just completed this evening. You can watch that again. And in this one, we have discussed about all those triangles that are present in the neck. And we talked about the answer cervicalis. And we talked about the you know, supra and the infrahyoid muscles. And we also talked about all those nerve supply and etc. topics. So this is a very important you know, region where there is, of course, we also talked about the deep fascia. Deep fascia has a lot of modifications in the head and neck region. So we talked about all this this evening at 5 p.m. So similarly, you have tomorrow 5 p.m. Um, this is in the afternoon, actually. I think it's at 2 p.m. There is a special session at 2 p.m. And there is regular session at 5 p.m. You can look out for all these, you know, notifications. For all that to happen, first of all, you need to follow me. So follow me on my profile. Go to my profile, just click on the follow button. Then you subscribe to Let's Crack Neat PG. So once you do this, you will be able to message me on the YouTube while during the class and you will also be able to access all my special classes. And once you join those plus classes with the referral code ROHINI, you will also be seeing me in the plus classes. All right. So this is launching two month subscription for an introductory offer of 6750 only so here you have introductory offer and otherwise it would be 7500 so you are actually saving more than um you know few bucks so this is let's start preparing and get cracking so you have plus subscription also where you have a paid subscription and there is daily life classes, series, and then structured courses, unlimited access to various, you know, uh, recorded courses, or it could be the PDF and various other study material. You also have test series and quizzes along with this. But Iconic is little different from that in the sense it also has access to the prep ladder. So that is like a bonus where you have two things that you can access. And this is iconic subscription. So there is a little various uh, in the price also. And there is something for UG students where they can have a firm foundation towards their PG preparation by going with the four-year subscription. You go with the four-year subscription, you get at 60000 plus subscription and at 70,000 iconic subscription. So you also get this raise a hand feature where you can talk to your educators. You can talk to them. You can interact with them and the whole class will get to, you know, listen to you, your question and the answer. And you. it is like it could be their question also. So you are kind of, you know, making everyone know about this answer. So that is going to be fun learning and it is also going to be very interactive. So that is the new feature you can look out for. So now here is last mile to meet PG where you can see the educators. All the 19 subjects are covered. You can see me also here. I teach anatomy. So you can see me also here. And... This is integrated clinical batch need PG. So you can see um, one sec here. Two. You 
All right, so this is integrated clinical batch need PG where you have uh, integrated dual educated series and uh, there is medicine, radiology and uh, pathology, pharmacology like that various, you know, subjects are clubbed. So here we have um, anatomy and orthopedics together. We have the ophthalmology and anatomy together and we also have ENT and anatomy together. So there are nice combinations where we get to study together. And then you also have these um, fine educators teaching you. And that starts on 15th of July. It has just started and it goes on till 27th of July. So this is something that just got over. So similar things will be there and you can enroll for all this. This is integrated clinical batch that is going to go on till 27th of August. And you can see focus FMG batch and that also has various educators and the duration is six months that is 650 hours is allotted and you can also see there is EMI option in case you don't want to pay everything up front and you want to pay it in installment and you want to go with EMI here it is 48 months you get it for 1406 1125 where you have this low cost EMI option available and it is on six months and above subscription only. So you have to use the code for this R-O-H-I-N-I. Okay, don't forget to use the code. And you can also see there is a big thank you. Okay, from my side for all those who have been patiently watching and waiting for the class to resume. So this is the referral code again and don't forget to subscribe and like and follow me on my profile. My name is Rohini. Okay, you can also see this username Roaqua where you can find me under Neat PG. So find me under Neat PG and you will be able to get a notification for all my classes that I'm going to have. I'm going to have very interesting classes coming up in the month of August. So please follow me so that you can get notifications on the same. All right. Now, first one. After we resume, this is the first question. What is this? All right. Here we have. Identify. So you identify this. What do you think here it is? Now there are various things. There is something that is the arrow that is pointing it. You have the nasal septum. You have the side maxillary air sign is just doing fine. Orbital rim is also fine. It looks fine to me on this side. But what happened on this side? Okay. What happened on the other side? That is what is arrow pointing at. Okay. So now... Let's see who has any answer for this. Pranita. Blowout fracture. Yes, it is blowout fracture. It is blowout fracture. Can you see the teardrop of the orbital rim? So this is a blowout fracture where you have either just the bony part, you know, getting fractured or it could also be some of the contents dropping into the maxillary sinus. So in this case, that is what has happened. You can see some of the contents dropped into the maxillary air sinus. Now here, this, she is so right, blood fracture. It refers to partial herniation of the orbital contents through one of its walls and usually occurs via blunt force or the trauma into the eye. So now you can see there is medial wall, lateral wall, superior, inferior. So the thing is, which walls are the weakest? So now you have the medial wall that is weakest because you have this lacrimal bone and you have the inferior wall that is also quite weaker compared to the other wall. And the contents can easily herniate into the ethmoid and maxillary air sinuses. Okay, medial wall contains this ethmoid. And inferior wall will fracture will lead into maxillary sinus. All right. This is orbital rim fracture could be forming only the outer rim of the orbit could be fractured. But in this case, it was complete blowout fracture. 
So now here it can also be because of all these bones getting involved, maxilla, zygomatic and the frontal. All right, so good one. Next, what is this? Diagnose. Can you diagnose Simran? Simran, Sona, we have and we have Pranita and we have um, Bishop. Diagnose, what is this? What do you think the picture indicates? Anyone? Anybody, what is this? There is spelling. There is redness. There is inflammation. Of which area? What area is this? Let's see. See, sometimes the middle ear infections, when it is not treated, it could spread to the mastoid ear cells, right? It is due to the porous nature. Mastoid ear cells, you know, the mastoid process has this, yeah, ear cells and some in some cases, mastoid process could have more bony material, but there are actually three types. There could be only air, there could be air and bony material or that is porous one, or it could be completely filled with bony structure. So there are three different types of mastoid process. Now here, if this is the case, then it can be a suitable, you know, area for replication of pathogen. So now here, mastoid process itself can get infected, right? So that is known as mastoiditis. It is secondary to otitis media. All right, how you can drain this? That is very important. So you have to remember there is something called supramiatal triangle. Okay, there is a supramiatal triangle and this triangle is very close to, if this is the external acoustic meatus and if there is this, you know, mastoid process here behind and you have a crest, mastoid crest. And if you draw a tangent here and align with the mastoid crest, you would get a small triangular area here. And this area is known as supramiatal triangle. Okay. So this is a very safe region because the facial nerve, the facial nerve is in this vicinity. You have to be very careful about the facial nerve. So we are trying not to disturb the facial nerve. And this is the triangle that is safest. Okay. To drain the mastoiditis, any pus from the mastoid inflammation. All right, so here you can see, so after it is healed, this is how it looks. Okay, there is this mastoiditis, there is in the CT scan also, you can see how cute, how nicely with the porous cells you can see. And you can also see the other structures, you can see the nasal septum, you can see the ethmoidal age cells you can see and you can also see the you know the other structures external acoustic meatus and you can also see the other bony structures you can identify but one thing that easily you can make out is the inflamed mastoid process instead of the air cells on this side it is completely filled with the pus so it looks more you know collected with fluid all right. So now here, okay, we'll go to the next one. Identify this bony condition. So Simran, identify this bony condition. So now what is this? Anyone? Pranita? You can see there is angle that is exaggerated, right? There is exaggerated angle. So you think it is rickets? Let's see. Rickets. 
So that's what you think Simran Sona says it is rickets. Okay, rickets. So now that is nothing but the softening and weakening of the bones in children. So but what is that is that is called in adults? In adults, what is it called? That is in children, rickets. So now because of prolonged, you know, vitamin D deficiency, there is bow leg and that is what happens in case of rickets. So this is the normal anatomy and this is what happens in the case of rickets. So the symptoms would include all these things like the skeletal deformities, fragile bones, easily which can get fractured and there is also dental problems and bone pains, muscle weakness, vitamin deficiency, D deficiency, many of us will have and we will not even know that we do have it. Right? Okay. Next one. Defective bone mineralization in general causes. What is this? In general, defective bone mineralization. This is the case with the bone mineralization. So what does it cause? Here you can see it is easily fractured. The bones also look very thin. So you can see there is a fracture here, here. And what do you think is wrong? What does it cause? So here the same thing we are talking about, the rickets. Now here you can see that the blood test can measure the level of vitamin D in your body and uh, x-rays also can you know, show you how what is the bone density and bone structure and also bone mineral density scans could be done to test the amount of calcium and phosphate in your bones and one of the indications is easily fractured bones, pain and stiffness in the joints and also feeling tired all the time, not able to, you know, do a lot of work. That is also an indication of deficiency and your muscles also would look very, very weak. So they may also have this waddling and side to side kind of stride or gait when they walk. So all that is an indication to tell you that there is deficiency of vitamin D. Now this one, next picture, what does this indicate? What do you see here? Identify this. Do you see there is a, a picture which is the, you know, drawn and there is a real picture there that has got an arrow pointing to it. There is also this soft palette. What is that on either side of the tongue? On either side of the tongue, what are these structures? On either side of the tongue, you can see there is this tonsil, right? Tonsil. This is the medial wall and this is the lateral wall. So, but this tonsil doesn't look normal. This is fine. Let's see what has happened here. There is inflammation of the palatine tonsil. So, now it is something that usually caused by viral infection. And uh, it also can cause, it also can be caused by bacterial infections like the candida. And that accounts for one third of the cases. Okay. So now it is tonsillitis. Of course, it is something that presents with difficult and painful swallowing because, uh, because often it is associated with pyrexia. You can see there is pus formation and also coating on the tongue that is called halitosis. The person would have always had, you know, a dislike for food because of these two conditions. On examination, the tonsils, they can, you know, appear very erythematous and uh, red, looking like a berry shape, berry in color. And also they look very, very swollen. And there is also the evidence of purulent exudate coming out of the tonsils. And you can also see there are lymphadenopathy. All those lymph nodes that drain the tonsils would have been swollen, especially the submandibular and the sublingual. So you can also see the tongue, whatever, wherever the tongue drains, the same lymphatic drainage you can remember for the tonsil. Do you know what is the lymphatic drainage of the tongue? This is very important. 
So the tongue has, this is the lymphatic drainage of the tongue. So you have to remember the tongue has this anterior and posterior two-third, okay? Posterior one-third and anterior two-third. Now here this middle portion is drained by what? The apex is drained by what? And this one is by what? Let me take a different color just to differentiate. This is submental lymph nodes. All right, the sides, submandibula. And this area is by superficial cervical. And posterior is by deep cervical. So remember, the tonsils are here in this region. And they are also supplied or drained by deep cervical deep cervical lymph nodes. So the ones which has this lymphadenopathy is deep cervical lymph nodes. These are the ones which are involved. So keep that in mind. It's same as the tongue, the lymphatic drainage. Now, a complication of bacterial tonsillitis is peritonsillar abscess. It is also called Quincy. It's a collection of pus in the peritonsillar space. And all the Quincy's, any collection of pus definitely requires drainage okay so one of the you know ways to approach this is also through the tonsillar bed all right next coming to the radiograph picture here we have a radiograph what does this indicate what are the things that you can see in this particular picture we can identify many things. One thing that I can identify is the cervical vertebrae. Okay, I can identify the cervical vertebrae. I can identify the hyoid bone very clearly. I can see those greater cornua, lesser cornua of the hyoid bone. Now, you can also see the thyroid cartilage here. This looks very much normal, right? It looks very normal. Now, you tell me when does this hyoid bone can get Fracture. When do you think it can get fracture? The hyoid. What kind of injuries can fracture the hyoid bone? Anybody? Simran? Ranita? Anyone? What kind of injuries can damage or fracture the hyoid bone? There is a greater cornua, lesser cornua. All this is seen. So, the attachments on this hyoid bone is supra and the infrahyoid muscles. Now, here the ossification is also important. Before we move on to the fracture, let's see a small um, slide on the ossification because this came up first. Now, the ossification, you have two centers for the body. This is also very important. There are two centers for the body and there are four centers for each cornua. Each cornua, there is greater cornua and lesser cornua. This has four centers, this has four centers and there are two centers for the body of the hyoid bone. So you can just imagine so many centers. So the more the centers, all these are secondary centers. Now when there is a more number of secondary centers, it will have more, you know, at more projections for the attachments. More the attachments... More the attachment of muscles indicates that there is more secondary centers and that's why the projections are also more. So you can see hyoid bone has got a lot of you know, projections on its surface that indicates that the more number of muscles get attached to it. Even though it's such a small um, U-shaped or uh, you know, magnet, U-type magnet-shaped structure or bone, there are so many centers to count. So here, important thing is the lesser cornuba, you know, it ossi ossify, ossification, it completes around 16 years of age and the body just after the birth and there is the greater cornuba, it completes when the person turns about 20 to 30 years of age. Okay, so till then it is not completely ossified, it is still cartilaginous. All right, so this is the greater cornua. 
And this is what completely fuses with the body by the person turns almost, you know, cross the middle age, 40 to 60 years of age. Otherwise, it is still there is a small cartilage in a segment that is separating it from the body. So now I was talking about when does it break. Roshan is back here. Roshan Ara. So we have uh, the answer hanging. So now here you can see there is a break in the thyroid bone. You can see the vertebrae also. And what do you think? Which vertebrae is this? Which vertebrae is this? What level is this? Thyroid bone is at what level? Anyone? Thyroid bone is at what level? Anyone? What do you think? At the same level, you have another vertebrae. This is C, which one? Is it C2, C3? It's, it is not C1. It is C. This is different. So it cannot be C1. Look at the shape and tell me. Is it C3 or C4? I'll wait for your answers. And... This is a case study where you can see there is 35 year old man and there is a strangulation just like our uh, Roshan said. Hanging. This is C3 level. And strangulation. And you can see there is persistent neck pain. This is attempt to strangulation. Okay. Because 12 days back attempted strangulation. And there is tenderness, lot of tenderness and you can also see there is a fracture in the hyoid bone. Which coronova? This looks like greater coronova of the hyoid bone. Lesser coronova you cannot see. It is very close to the you know, body. So this is the greater coronova of the hyoid bone. Okay. All right. So that is one thing. Next, next question. A 45 year old male patient, his name is Walter, doesn't matter what it is, is brought to the emergency department with a suspected neck injury. Okay, he had a neck injury and it was due to the automobile accident where he was rear ended. He was in the vehicle which was at the back. The patient presents with the cervical collar now placed on his neck by the paramedics. He was taken to the emergency with the collar around his neck at the from the scene of the accident. Now all his vitals you know are stable and he's alert and he's very cooperative and patient relates that he experienced pain in his neck and initial you know, concern is that he may have suffered a neck injury because of flexion and extension of the neck during the accident. There was flexion and extension because usually when the neck and the head is not supported, even suddenly when we break the vehicle also, the same thing happens, right? There is a flexion and then there is a extension and the extension is not just extension, it is hyperextension. So, hyperextension is what is going to lead to the tear in the ligament. But which ligament? Which ligament do you think will tear in this case? Which ligament will tear in such cases? What is the type of injury? Whiplash injury. So, Roshan can tell me which injury can tear ligaments in the neck. So here it is already mentioned. It is whiplash. Now tell me. Whiplash. Hyperextension. So which ligament? Okay. Let's go to the picture where you can see. The ligaments first, let's look at all the ligaments. By then you will know which ligament we are talking about. 
So there is anterior, middle and the posterior column. Posterior column has a lot of ligaments listed. So here there is, uh, you know, lamina is there. There is spine is there. In between the spine we have ligaments. There is facets are there of the vertebrae. Then there is supra spinous ligament. And you can also see there is anterior and posterior longitudinal ligaments. So these anterior longitudinal and posterior longitudinal ligaments you can see. But there is a tear here and that is what is going to be your answer. Anterior longitudinal ligament. So this is anterior, this one is posterior. So this is very common in dislocations and fractures of the cervical vertebrae. All right, so this is hyperextension. What other features can you see? You can see the cervical vertebrae. Look at the vertebra prominence. Now you have cervical vertebrae. There is C1, C2 and C7 which are called atypical. Rest all of them like the C3, C4, C5 and C6 are typical. These are called the typical cervical vertebrae. Alright. So these many things you can understand by the x-ray. So you can also identify there is this implant dental implant right of course you can see the hyoid bone here and yes you can see the sphenoid all right okay now tell me what is this picture indicating to you there is this anatomical snuff box why do we call this anatomical snuff box snuff you know what is snuff because in olden days, people used to put those snuff powder on this area and they used to, you know, make it into powder. They used to just rub it more and make it into a powder because it acted like a pit. So this, this is like a pit where things can be put and, you know, powdered. So this is anatomical snuff box and this is the surface, you know, anatomy you can see. And you can see a tendon that is alone, standing out lonely. And that is the medial boundary. Okay, that is a medial boundary. This is lonely tendon. Lonely tendon is extensor pollicis longus. Longus is lonely. Remember always, longus is lonely. The other side, obviously, we have extensor pollicis brevis. Okay, then you also have abductor pollicis longus. So these are the two tendons on the other side. So this is lateral and this is medial side. And floor is formed by the scaphoid bone. Obviously, any fracture to the scaphoid bone leads to tenderness in this area. And you can also see that there is radial artery lying here and radial artery pulsations can be checked in this area. Other than that, the vein, which vein do you think the cephalic vein is present in the anatomical snuff box? So tenderness in the box signifies that there is fracture of the scaphoid bone. So these are the things you can palpate. Radial artery, styloid process, scaphoid, trapezium, base of the first metacarpal, cephalic vein, all these are the things that you can identify. All right, let's see the next one. So here there is something you know, the person has made a fist and he has extended all those abductors, right? All those abductors are 
you know, checked. Or when do you check the abductors? Now you can do this by putting your thumb into the fist and covering it tightly. And also when you stretch your wrist, wrist can be stretched. And wrist is stretched. If there is pain during ulnar deviation, so you can see this is on this side, that is ulnar side deviation. That indicates that it is positive Finkelstein test. Okay, now Finkelstein test is done for what? First of all, let's see. That is done for tenosynovitis, that is tendon sheath. So now tendon sheath inflammation can always, you know, give you positive test. So there is one more you should not get confused with that is Deputrin's contracture where there is the inflammation that is because of the thickened tissue around the tendons. The tissue that is present around the tendon can be, you know, inflamed and that causes the pain. So that is different and it also prevents extension of these fingers and that is different and this is different. So that is the difference between that. So this is tendon and that is the inflammation in the tissue. So this is something you have to remember. Now, what are the things that you can identify in this picture? You can identify the arch, you can identify Palmer arch. You can also identify the thenar eminence, hypothenar eminence. Okay, these are the thenar muscles. These are hypothenar muscles. And all these tendons are the flexors. All those are the flexor tendons. So flexor tendons, once the tendons are cut, only then you will be able to see the lumbricals and the intrashe. So these tendons are the ones which are present just beneath the arch. You have superficial and deep palmar arches. So in this case, you can see the superficial palmar arch which gives those, you know, digital branches. Palmar digital branches. So all these are the palmar digital branches. So you can see that here. Next one. So what are these? These are the tendons of digitorum. This is the tendon of digitorum. You can see all the cut tendons. You can see digitorum tendons and you can also see the extensor expansions. You can see here on either side and you can also see the interosseae, the last ones that just before the bone you hit, you see the set of muscles is interosseae. So you can see there is one here, one here, one and then there is another one. There are four of them. So four of them is dorsal interosseae. This is on the dorsal surface. So dorsal surface would do dab. So remember abduction, dorsal interosseae will do abduction. Okay, abduction of the finger. So you can also see these fingers are abducted, right? abducted. Next, here you still have not hit the bone, you still have those tendons. Which tendons are they? These are the flexor digitorum tendons. See, once you see the flexor digitorum profundus tendon, if the muscles are arising from the tendon like this one, then you know that they are the lumbricals, okay? Lumbricals arise from the flexor digitorum profundus. How many lumbricals we have? We have four. We have two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. There are four of them. The first one, thumb, does not have a lumbrical. So there are four lumbricals. Two, three, four, five. So you can see all these lumbricals, what do they do? They do the flexion at, you know, 
MCP metacarpophalangeal joints and they do extension at the IP joints, interphalangeal joints. Just like I'm holding this pen and I'm writing. I'm holding this pen, I'm writing. What I have done? I have flexed at this MCP joint, you can see. And I have extended all my IP joints and that is the action of lumbrical. So it helps you write. You can write holding the pen. Okay, so that is the action of lumbricals. And there are four of them. Two, three is supplied by the median nerve. And four, five is supplied by the alnar nerve. Okay, median now, and that is supplied by the ulnar now. Very, very important to remember. All right, so with all these, I have reached the slide where I can end it now. And I would like to thank everyone for joining. And this is image-based learning. So we have a lot of images where we can, you know, learn a lot of things. With images, your brain, you know, perceives the information really, really well. So you should always... Go for those things where you can, you know, relate with an image. And I also want to mention one more thing about the special classes. Please look out for all my special classes. And that is at every day 5 p.m. So now I have this image-based learning and more of the same you can see in my special classes. Every day you can see at 5 p.m. I have some more learning MCQs, everything happening at special classes. You can download the app. You can join me there. First of all, you need to download the app and follow. Once you follow, you get the notification about my classes and join me at special classes. So special classes are even more interactive. I can connect with each and every one of you who is watching this video now. So join my special class every day at 5 p.m. please. And tomorrow, Saturday, I have another session with the special class at 2 p.m. So there is 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. on Saturdays. And this is myself, Dr. Roini. And a quick break for, you know, till 9 p.m. and 9 p.m. I have another session. And I look forward to you all in another set of images, image-based learning five, number five. So please watch me at 9 p.m. again. Until then, you have a great day.